technical uh, hangout. It's all good. I'm it's all good. Now, right? It's all good, man. I already cheated. I cheated because I was having some ribs. My wife bought some Costco ribs, little knot to Costco there. They were fantastic. And Sinfandel and ribs is a pairing made in heaven. Oh my God, this Sinfandel is awesome, man. It's yeah. so, so spicy and ethereal. At the same time, it's, it's, it's bold and weightless. It doesn't feel like a whack of fruit. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Let me uh, do a couple of, of shout outs first. I want to thank Bodegar, uh, CC1. I want to thank Jorge Wolf, Jennifer Vitali, the people from EJ Gallo for setting this up. You're a very accomplished winemaker. I was doing a little bit of research before getting on the air with you. And uh, I'm very fortunate. I'm very proud to spend a Thursday night with you. So thank you for that. And I also want to give a shout out to Fiji Water. They're my official water provider. I got to, you know, I drink a lot of wine, do a lot of interviews. So I got to stay hydrated, right? I got to drink a lot of water. <laughs> and also, I, and also I want to thank Ariomet, my internet provider. So Mark, um, before we get into the wines, how are you, man? It's, it's 508. Are you in California? It is. I just kind of getting off work. <laughs> okay okay what in part of what 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 part of the plus one recordings my dear friend miguel from new york is here what what part of the season are you in i know that there are you know specific months where you do x and y and z what are you doing in the winery these days well we're wrapping up bottling okay. um in fact we're going to be bottling um the 2019 um sentinel cab and 2019 uh red blend the, the gravity red blend um, next week so okay. we got those wines um ready to go and they'll be bottling next week and then we're really um waiting for harvest to start okay um, and 2020 what can you tell us about that vintage 2020 or 2021 well, 2020 weren't you saying that you're bottling you're bottling 2020 or 2021 2020 is resting right yeah we're bottling 2019 yeah, exactly. You're bottling 2019 after being in oak. How does how is that shaping up to be? Oh, it's 2019's awesome vintage. Um, great intensity of fruit. It was a really um, cool, uh, long growing season. It's one of the latest um, I've kind of experienced. So awesome flavors, really good acidity. Um, kind of a you know just a perfect a perfect vintage once it got going. Okay. No, I'm and, excited. Uh, I'm excited about the wines from 2019. Let me give a shout out to my dear friend Leopoldo from Ecuador. He's watching us. He's not big of a, a big of a wine drinker, but he's a dear friend. We went to school together. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself before we get into the wines and the project. Just want to know about your career. I was, um, you know, read, reading a little bit about your background, and you've been involved in the industry for a number of years now. So how did you get involved? in the wine business were you exposed to wine growing up and at home with your parents yeah you know i i so i grew up in california um and luckily for me um you know i was introduced not so much to the really the wine wine making side of things but the grape growing uh, my dad just retired um, from many years as a professor and research scientist um, studying grapevines uh, okay. taught viticulture which is grape growing um at uc davis oh and, my god um you know as an early kid as a, you know early on in my life as a kid um i would go out into the vineyards with him um and see you know play around and then as i got older i started working in the vineyards um and this is down in the central valley so a lot warmer climate really um focusing more on table table and raisin grape Mm -hmm. So ever since you, ever since you can recall words like Cabernet, Pinot Noir, were were words that were common at home. Well, no, they were there was Thompson seedless, and they were they were they were the table grapes, and they were the grapes that you would eat. Um, okay. And it was as as uh, you know the years went on, there was more research money funded for wine grapes, and he started to transition out of table and raisin grape research into wine grape research, and that's when. I would go to Paso Robles on the Central Coast and up to Napa, and he was doing research. Um, and so, but, you know, Cabernet at that young of age, I didn't really get it. You know, it wasn't until I got older and uh, was kind of floundering around in um, junior college, wondering what I wanted to do. And he kind of said, you know, 
hey, why don't you, you know, you've, you, you've, you've had experience in the vineyard, you, you know what's going on there. Um, why don't you go into enology viticulture and kind of the rest is history. You know, I, I, I graduated um, and this is going to be my 23rd vintage. <laughs> Mainly mm, right. So, and do, do, do you have a recollection of that first wow moment, that first wine that perhaps, you know, knocked your socks off, that decided that you wanted to commit your life to this? I do have a wine. Obviously, I'm not a winemaker, but I do love, um, I do love talking about wine and the, the, the history behind these bottles and labels. And I do recall having a moment that... Um, I, I was just blown away by by something that was inside a bottle. Uh, do you recall that first wine that kind of said to yourself, "Oh my God, this is something unbelievable"? Yeah, it was a, a '94 Robert Mondavi Reserve um, Tokelon Cab, and it okay. was it was so smooth and silky, and the texture was just phenomenal. It was it was you know. I was drinking, you know, early in, in my uh, adult life, was drinking not so nice wines. And then to get that from my, uh, from my mom um, really just kind of opened my eyes and, 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 and it kind of snowballed into this life, you know, this career and really, you know, a, a passion and a hobby of mine is, is also collecting wines. So now I, I'm not gonna say, I, I think my wife might be on this, I'm not going to say how much, you know, how many wine, you know, clubs I'm on and how much money I spend on wine um, now, but you know, I have a hard time keeping them in my cellar. Yeah, what 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 do you what do you drink that's not California, that's not let's say not US so that we don't get into the competition. Of course. But but what do you drink? Like what regions, what parts of the world of grapes? I love uh Chateauneuf. I love Chateauneuf okay. pop. I love Southern Rhone. I love uh you know, South of France, uh Spain. Um, I love whites from Sancerre, um, okay. crisp, crisp, intense whites, um, and uh, yeah, really kind of, um, I, I think hedonistic, um, you know, reds that still have an old world charm. I think, you know, Spain and, and, and France have that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, an, it's, it's a mix of, of, of California meets old world in those in those styles of wine. So like from Chateauneuf and, you know, the, the old vine Grenache from Spain, um, really, you know, can't beat, you can't beat value there either, so. Yeah, exactly. Let's 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 talk about uh, uh, the, the Mount Peak winery per se. Um, what, what can you tell me in general terms? Because we're going to get into each of the wines, we're going to taste them yep. together, we're going to profile them if you will obviously you're the expert i'm the blogger but what can you tell me about the philosophy behind mount peak i, I know that uh it, it's been around for a long time the, the vineyard the site and yeah. at some point and at some point it was rescued i really liked about rescuing something that uh provided or, or, or was a, a great source of fruit for a number of years and then at some point it was i guess uh, put it put aside, and then it was brought back by by investment and by curiosity and, and entrepreneurship. What can you tell me about the site and Mount Peak per se? So the the Mount Peak story started a long time ago in the late 1800s. Uh, there was a gentleman, a grocer out of San Francisco named Emmanuel Goldstein, who moved to Sonoma Valley in uh, 1880, um, and he climbed up the western side of the Maya Camus Mountains, which um, you know, Maya Camus frames the western side of Napa and the eastern side of the Sonoma Valley. And he, he, he kind of went up into the hills around a thousand feet and then um, kind of staked his claim there. And a couple of years later in 1886, he built a winery, a three story winery, um, and started planting vineyards um, up there. And uh, the winery was um, in production up until prohibition, the, the vineyard um, similarly, and then the vineyard itself changed hands to the Martinis, uh, Louis Martini, um, in the, the late 30s or uh, mid 30s. But the winery, you know, California sits on a lot of fault lines. <laughs> yeah. And we have, we have uh, earthquakes from time to time. And so this old winery uh, named Mount Peak, um, was 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 in full function until till the uh, till prohibition, and it's really 
we've resurrected the, the 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 brand, not so much the winery. The winery is still standing, but but uh, on on a couple, um, you know, with some with some support. You know, it's it's on the side of a hill. It's been um, overgrown by by fig trees and and and, and oak trees. And so it's really, uh, these wines represent the vineyard around the winery um, that are still in production from the 19, early 1900s. And uh, the, 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 the vineyards, how old are they? I mean, we're, we're drinking some, some pretty old stuff, right? In terms of- Oh yeah, of, of the, how- the Zinfandel goes back to the, the late 1800s, 1890, 1900. Um, and then the Cabernet, is a little less, um, you know, isn't as old as that. It's, uh, you know, 30, 20 years. Um, and then and then the red, similarly, it has some old vine in there. Um, but the petite Syrah that goes into it is, is actually more of a youthful, uh, a younger vine, a younger vine. If, if, if you could touch for a minute or so, uh, for, for those of us who are learning from, from people like yourself, what's the difference between older vines and younger ones? I mean, in terms of the quality of the wine, what, what does it provide to the final product having old vineyards? You know, I, I think in California, um, you're really starting to lose a lot of those, those old vineyards. In, in Europe, I, th- I think it's a little more common um, to see old vines, 100, 100 year plus in, in, in France or, or uh, you know, Spain or Italy. But in, in the U.S., the majority of old vines are going to be found, they're going to be Zinfandel or a field blend of other, other, other varietals. And, and really what it is, is I think it's one, it's, it's the history and the heritage. You know, those old vines, when you, when you see them, it is something, you know, it, it, the, the label that you see on the bottle, um, the rattlesnake kind of going through that old gnarled um, head trained vine is what you see up in the vineyard. Um, and, you know, I, I, think, I think that old age provides character. Um, it provides intensity. And, um, you know, it just, it provides a little bit of mystique. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and piggyback and piggybacking on that, I mean, the labels are just beautiful. Uh, the old gnarly vine here, I love it. Um, wh- why the name and, and why, and what is the philosophy behind this labels that they all have a piece of art in itself. I mean, the label is, is a collector, collector items of, of sorts. Do you have this label year in, year out, or, or do they change every year? Tell me a little, about, a little bit about the label and the name Rattlesnake. So, yeah, the, I'll start with the naming of the wines. Um, so, you know, any, any vineyard needs uh, good workers um, to, tend, to tend to the, um, to the health of the, of the vines and the nurturing the, the fruit to, to harvest. And so over the years, there's been many, many um, – vineyard crews and, 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 and same vineyard workers that have, have been there for, for many, 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 many years. And over time, these, these blocks, we have over 50 different blocks on Monterosso, um, they get nicknames. They get named for various reasons. You know, in particular, our rattlesnake Zinfandel, it's, it comes from a block up on the top of the, of the property around 1,200, 1,400 feet. And um, rattlesnakes like to yeah, like to yeah. Hang out well, there. it's it, it's the animal. It's 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 obviously a tribute to the to the animal that they see a lot right. of them over there for sure. Yeah, and, and they get and they get really big. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the and the on the artwork, I mean, it's 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 gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it's really cool. I really like the you know when you pick up the bottle, you can see that kind of metallic. Um, uh, silver through the through the snake and in the vine they're all three different um artists i I couldn't tell you off the top of my head who who they were and but they did a really good job so each each label is a different artist um and it's an interpretation of kind of that nickname um from that box so the second wine the gravity um these are this is a petite syrah dominated um blend and we have a block um kind of in the the lower elevations of the property that kind of goes down this little canyon um and it's like this really steep uh little bowl 
and it mm -hmm. looks like the vines are getting getting pulled down the hill, and that's why we call it gravity. That's awesome. We'll get into that in a bit, and then the, the cab. Let's let's taste together, my friend, because we're here to taste. Okay. Do you have Do you have any wine with you? Oh yeah. All right, great. All right. I got wine so in, in times of COVID, uh, we we toast like this. We get we we give a little a little tap yeah. to the screen. So we're okay. drinking the Rattlesnake Sinfandel. I told you yeah. that I cheated a bit. I had a yep. little bit of this with ribs. And oh, oh my God, that is, yeah, that, that, the nose, the, the spicy nose, the sweet tobacco, that beautiful pepper and, and the Sinfandel, you know, it's, it's leafy, fruity. Um, and, 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 and when it's well made, like, like this one, it's, it's not sweet, a lot, sweet at all, but rather it's, it, it's fruit laden and it's, and it's fruit filled without being jammy. I mean, I, I'm really enjoying this Sinfandel. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to bash other other Zinfandels, but the the reason why this Zinfandel is so special is the place it's grown. And even with the ripe, luscious fruit that we can get in California, there's a a, a, a vein of acidity that keeps it all balanced. Yeah, we, it we can get um, ripe fruit that's really enjoyable to drink and smell, but there's also that acidity that keeps it nice and balanced. It, what I think it's kind of juicy. It's really, really juicy on the mouth, especially. And, 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 and keep, and keep it, keeps it tight. Cause Symphondel at times can get a little too overblown, can get of disjointed. Course. It can yep. get sweet, jammy, oaky, and just too voluptuous. I mean, pornographic if you will, but, but here you have that uh, vein of acidity and you do have that freshness and and just juiciness. It's a juicy, juicy wine. I mean, this would go incredibly well with a, I don't know, burger with blue cheese or, or something along those lines. And and it's it, and it's a beautiful like wine for it's a beautiful wine for the summer. I mean, here in Puerto Rico, it's incredibly hot. Not all people, you know, do barbecues and uh, do stuff outside. And this is a very, very, very well made wine. So, is this a hundred percent Sinfandel? No, there's a, there's ten percent ten percent Petit Syrah in there. <laughs> mm, interesting, interesting. And Petit percent Syrah from, from Monterosso. Yeah, and uh, in in terms of in terms of of pairings, if somebody's watching us, I already said my pairing. What do you, what do you you know what do you eat this with? What do you uh, cook when you're having this? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think you. You, you nailed it. I mean, that hamburger with uh, a hamburger with blue cheese, ribs, um, you know, any um, pasta, um, anything with, 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 uh, a, a, I mean, any steak too. I mean, th yeah. this, the, the, the acidity and the fruitiness of this, I think can go well with, you know, hanger steak or flank steak with some chimichurri or, and, and, the, and, and the acidity can also withstand a, a slice of pizza. I mean, it's it's hard sometimes oh, yeah. to, to pair uh, certain wines that are big and bold with, with the tomato sauce in the pizza, but I'm loving the acidity here. So rattlesnake, for those pizza watching too. and for those yeah. who will watch this later in my YouTube channel, this is a delicious Sinfandel. It's juicy, it's generous, but it's it's balanced. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a wine that will provide a lot of pleasure. I mean, it's 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 very pleasant. It's a very pleasant wine. And it's drinking great right now. It is drinking great. And this is a 2016, what I'm having. Yeah. Which which was also a good vintage, to try for Sin in Sonoma. Yes, exactly. And, and I think that that Petit Syrah helps give it a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a backbone as well to keep it um, a little more lively and, and structured. And it's, and it's, you know, for me, I like to drink Zinfandel pretty early. And with that extra, with that extra petit sirah, I think it's 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 holding on, and it's still as good as it was, you know. When it let's was give a nod to our Argentine friend Jen Vitali. She's excited that you said chimichurri. You gave I a little nod. That, yeah. you, you you gave a little nod to her uh, home country. All right, so let's uh, let's use what you just said about petit sirah as a segue to get to this gravity, uh, which is mostly petit sirah. Yeah, you know, petit, petit sirah is not as famous as Cab or Pinot Noir. If, if you could explain this grape, if you could perhaps touch for 30 seconds about Petit Syrah, it's seldom do you see a wine which is 100% Petit Syrah or mostly Petit Syrah. At least for me, it's unusual. 
Well, how how would you describe patisserie, and what yeah. does it bring? And what does it bring to a wine? It's kind of like an oxymoron because there's nothing petite about it. You know, that's the that's the funny thing. It really just talks about the the, the cluster size, and usually the the berry size is a lot smaller. But it's a very tannic um, varietal. It, it uh, great variety, and um, it has pretty thick skin, and so it has a lot of tannin. And it has massive amounts of dark fruit. You know, this mm -hmm. this one, like Petite Syrah is on the, if you if you start with like red fruit spectrum on the left and you go through, you know, uh, red, strawberry, cherries into, into blackberries, then, then you end up in like blueberries. And this is where Petite Syrah likes to live. And it's- Oh my cute. God, the nose here is unbelievable. There's a lot of stuff going on here uh this is a whack of, of of freshness of herbs mint menthol and then just massive amounts of, of black fruit but also there's there's a complexity that i'm really enjoying some some graphite some iron uh some soy sauce uh and then some san marzano plum yeah plum tom tomato uh, yeah that, i'm loving I'm loving this uh, that that irony earthiness is, 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 is a hallmark from the Monterosso venue where these grapes come from. You know, this 57% Petit Syrah, this is, this is a, a, an intriguing blend. It's got 15% um, Sangiovese off the of Monterosso. Really? So, so a little Italian uh, mix in there. And then 15% Zin. So that, that Zin and Sangiovese are really kind of a counterbalance to Petit Syrah's brawniness and, and flamboyancy. Um, and then rounding out with a little bit of cab and then Grenache for kind of more, um, you know, roundness and softness. So is this a, is this a creation that, that you came up with or you inherited this blend already? No, this is a creation I come up with every year. Every year, this blend is going to be different. Okay. I, I, let me, let me stop. Let me stop you there for a bit, Mark. So the rattlesnake it, year in, year out is mostly simple though, right? Exactly. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's labeled Zinfandel. The, the, it'll have varying percentages of Petit Syrah, but never, you know, to, to change the name of the, of the and, 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 and this wine year in, year out is mostly Petit Syrah, but then you, you play around with the other percentages. Exactly. Exactly. I've never had a Zinfandel, Sangiovese, Petit Syrah, Cabernet blend yeah. in my life. How did you? And it works. It's amazing. It's it's it, it has because I'm picking up uh, a little bit of, of each of the grapes. I mean the exuberance of the patissera. Then it's that irony uh, node, er, 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 herbaceous note of the sanjo. I'm getting the the sweetness of the Sinfandel and the spine of the cab, the the, the the blackberry, the black cherry, and it works. And if you read, when I read it before, you know, and I didn't cheat with this one, I, I, this is my first time sniffing this and it works. Didn't you take a risk when you were making this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the San Giovese was, was kind of out of left field. Um, yeah. but you know, it's, it, 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 a lot of, a lot of blending, a lot of time, you know, tasting through the different lots, um, to really kind of come up with something that was going to be delicious. I mean, you know, this has got six years of, of, of age on it. I think, um, you know, it's all, it's all starting to smooth out. All the, the hard edges are really starting to, um, round out and, um, it's drinking nice. Yeah. To all those points, it, it is really complex. It's got, it's got a lot going on in the nose and then, um, you know, that leather and earthiness are kind of, I think those are hallmarks and all these wines you're going to find that, yeah, they, I make them in a California kind of ripe style to get that fruit, but the vineyard is going to be helping me out by providing more acid and more complexity and those, those savory notes of earthiness and, um, you know, herbs and, and all that. And there's this incredible sensation of creme de cassis or liquor or, um, marastino cherry the, on, on the palate. It's, it's 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 juicy not as juicy as the first one because there's there there's more structure here for yeah. sure there's a lot more structure than, than in the first one but um in spite of its 15.5 alcohol it doesn't feel alcoholic it, it feels that it can handle its weight uh, it's not disjointed i always make this analogy 
Like you can drive 180 miles per hour in a Ferrari and you're not going to notice. You can drive that in a, in a Fiat and you can crash, right? The, the car is going to go like this. So here it, it's handling its weight and it's handling its speed very well. Very, like very that. well. I like that analogy. I might, I might yeah, use it's, that. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that, now. I'm gonna use that I, one. I've had, man, I've had wines that are 15.5 and they're, you know, do you remember those Weight Watchers chocolate shakes? That's, you know, it's, it's, it's a dessert. I mean, it's right. impossible to drink. Right. Here, it's, it's carrying its heft because there's massive dollops of fruit, but it's, it's put in a nice corset. I mean, it's, it, it works. What can I say? It's nice. Yeah. No, it does. And, and again, this is for, for, having a little bit of age on it i think it's um you know it's starting to lose those really primary fruit aromas and some of the other some of the other um characteristics are starting to come up into the into into play here and, and i think that's that's great too i'm you know, loving think, the, the sweet tobacco that's here yeah. i'm loving the sweet tobacco it's incredible what's the price point for this wine mark because here in puerto rico we have very similar prices uh, as in the well Puerto Rico is part of the U.S., of course, but what's the price point here? Do you recall that? Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure anywhere from 40 to 50, depending yeah. on, you know, the, the Zinfandel is around 40 to 45. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking that this would be a very cool gift, you know, oh, yeah. for, for a wine lover. Not not only the, the, the art, obviously, the, the, the Monterosso, the Mount Peak history, the very old vines, but the blend, man, this is very... And don't get this wrong, but it's a weird wine. Like if, if, if you're a wine geek, like I consider myself to be, not that I'm knowledgeable, I pretend that I know, but I like to learn. I keep learning. But Sanjo, Sinfandel, Grenache, <laughs> Petit cab. Syrah. Yeah, a little bit of cab. Yeah, a little bit of cab. So a lot of people would be really, really curious to taste this. And it works because, you know, I, I guess that, you do have people that you report to when you prepare these wines. What happened when you first told the, the owners of the winery, hey, hey, I'm putting together some Sanjo Grenache Petit Syrah Sinfandel blend? Yeah, I, I think the Sangiovese is always the like, huh? Because, you know, there's not a lot of Sangiovese planted in California. Right. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone can do it as good as the Italians. So, um, but obviously there's there's a, a pretty strong italian um heritage uh at uh, monterosso with the martini family and yeah again i think it's it's finding that balance that's that's the that's the key with this wine is you know the the sum of the parts um are um really coming together and like works well man it works really well it's a very interesting blend i love the label and uh it's definitely a, a a a conversation piece i mean if you arrive to a party with this or you gift it to a friend he this will stand out and as you said the sanjo it's like when you were little and you had to exclude something that doesn't belong or doesn't fit and you go like pear banana pineapple truck what fruits in a truck <laughs> <laughs> so the sanjo yeah. is a truck here but it's and nice if, man and if you bring that to a party you, you'll have a good time You'll have a good time for sure, and 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 as I said, I think that the way it carries its weight, it, it it's it's very elegant in spite of its, you know. I always um, like to make this analogy, and and I, I guess the Ferrari analogy, you you will prefer it than, than this one. But there are certain wines that are so big, but that they carry themselves with poise and elegance. That I say it reminds me, and this has never happened. It's just my my sick mind, but. Reminds me of Shaquille O'Neal on stilettos, wa walking down a, a runway. But but <laughs> that's quite the that's quite the image. Yeah, but but don't think of Shaq falling down. Think of Shaq walking down like 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 uh, Cindy Crawford. Okay, all right. So let <laughs> let's go to the last one. This is a Sentinel. This is a 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon, and this yeah. is part Sonoma, part Napa, right? Yeah, so this, so this is, I, I think, I'm glad that you actually have a bottle of this because this is a very, very unique wine. Um, outside of the kind of creepy eye <laughs> in the, uh, the Sentinel 
So this is that there's a there's a block um, at at Monte Rosso called Sentinel, and it's the first Cabernet. What's it called again? Sentinel. Okay. Sentinel, um, like the soldier. It's it, it's it's kind of standing guard as you come into the property, and it has like kind of a resemblance of a sh- the shape of a shield. So in 2018, I, and this this might be a one of the most uh, I think this is a one of a kind wine right here because it, it it blends the iconic historic vineyard of Monterosso with um, another iconic but younger vineyard in Napa, the Stagecoach Vineyard um, on the on the Vaca Range. So um, this is sixty percent uh, Monterosso Cab and 40% stagecoach cab. And there's a little bit of Petit Verdot. There's there's 4% Petit Verdot from Monterosso in here. And it's it's old world meets new world meets like there's so much stuff going. This is a this wine is a baby when when um I found out that yeah. Like, yeah, it, 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 it's 18. a baby. Yeah, there there's a little bit of of under uh, we are committing some kind of crime opening this so young. But this is incredible. I mean it has massive amounts of, of mint, cassis, there's this uh graphite and 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 that that be, that beautiful cavernet fruit that's filled yeah, with uh, pe- pepper. There's a little violet even. There's a little like Yeah, floral. for sure. There, there there there's a floral, there's there's brilliance. I mean, you cannot smell brilliance, but you can sense it, I guess. Uh Oh, it's be- it, this is a beautiful wine. This is a baby, um, but I am glad that you uh, are able to try it because I think this might be one of the best cabs we've made um, mm. under under the Mount Peak. I, I really like it. It's and it and the 18, 18 was similar to um, to nineteen, which I was talking about earlier. Was it was a it was a lot. It was a really nice growing season. It was later. There was no really crazy heat spikes, so we got perfect ripeness lots of intensity um and this wine again the 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 mix of of kind of the old world earthy style of of monteroso mixed with the power and structure of of napa stagecoach is and then the no it's a spec it's a spec it's a spectacular bottle of wine how many there's only so much fruit right so there's only so many bottles that you can make how many bottles of this do you make uh, we made very, very few. This was, uh, I want to say we made 300 cases. It's incredible. I mean, uh, and, it, and it had an, it got a 95 Parker, right? Was it 95 it, Parker? Yeah, it got a 94. <laughs> 94. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's an A. It's right there, man. It's in the mid nineties. Yeah. Uh, this and, is it's, it. and, it, and it's, it, it retails for 60, $70. Oh, like for, really? For, for a cab at this caliber is yeah i don't want to uh, say it's a value because that's, that's why are you charging so little are you what losing money man what is it i, I can i, I can counsel you i would sell this for a hundred bucks man yeah no Daniel, know. jen it what's drinks, going on it drinks like a hundred dollar bottle cap oh I, it definitely no does doubt. and and you know i and, and the label again is beautiful um so this is a different artist i'm i'm, I'm taking a, you know I'm, I'm really surprised that all three of them are different artists. I would I would have thought that it's the same person making this art. Yeah, different, different artists. I you am can see really, the, really the, loving. The yeah, I'm I'm really loving all of the wines, Mark. Um, so these are the only three wines that that are out. I mean, the only three wines that the winery produces, Mount Peak. Yeah. Yep. Oh. I know. Yeah. Like when you. When you commit to these wines, you're like, you, you get kind of, you, you get pretty focused in, um, in uh, the, the kind of food you're going to eat. <laughs> yeah. These are, all, these, these are all kind of big, brawny reds. Um, but I think that there's a lot of options. There, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of different cuts of meat and, and um, you know, to your point, there's different pastas and, and, and pizzas. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I could drink this with, with, tacos and this is incredible let me what what do you uh, what do you try to elicit what do you try to achieve uh and this more of a philosophical i guess question uh when a consumer that you perhaps may never get to meet tastes one of your wines what's what's the message aside from enjoying the quality of the terroir you're a born californian right no well i i grew up in california i was born in the midwest 
Okay, but 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 you consider yourself California, right? Yeah. So yeah. you're 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 proud of that land. So aside from communicating the land, what's and aside from pleasure, I'm taking away a couple of your answers, okay. a couple of your gonna, options. I was just gonna say, uh, yeah, I wanted, yeah. To, I wanted to buy another bottle. Yeah, but what? <laughs> exactly. That's a very that's a very smart answer. But like, what what do you what do you what do you want to achieve? What do you want for them to be their takeaway? I mean, your consumers when they taste this wine. I mean, yeah, I, I think um, that's a really tough question, and you took away a lot of good answers. So, <laughs> you, you, you know, the 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 pleasure piece, and um, you know, the sense of place. I mean, that I mean, at the end of the day, that's really what wines are. It's it's, it's a, a a snapshot of of time and place. I mean, this is you know, the, the, you just tasted through three different vintages. Um, of 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 the, the the same kind of um, tier of wines, and you know you're, you're you're getting that that vintage date that that what the rain and the heat and the um, winds and all the all the things that go into gr your growing season down into that to that vintage, and then the I I try it's pretty say, man it's pretty I try not to mess it up man. I, I really I, I, I want to um, shepherd the wine um, as 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 minimal as I as I can to not screw it up to not give the you know heavy handed um, winemakers uh, uh, touch on it and 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 have the have the um, consumer pick it up and maybe get buff because these bottles are heavy as hell. Yeah, um, they are. They are. I, I like your answer. How you try to convey a snapshot of what happened in your life and on the life of those who were involved in producing the bottle. I mean, this is a beautiful, and I'm really surprised by the price. I mean, uh, considering the, the, the quality of the fruit, the tradition, how old the vines are, for $60, $70, this is a brilliant bottle of wine. So let's review them before we wrap up and I pardon for my stupid questions and taking up so much of your time. This Sinfandel is incredible. All of these wines are available in Bodegar here in Puerto Rico. The Mount Peak Wines, for those watching now and those who will watch later in YouTube, this is the Rattlesnake. And this is a great barbecue, great summer wine. 2016 Sinfandel. Definitely, definitely for Sinfandel lovers, seek it out. Lovely, lovely uh, artwork on the front. Then, you know, for me, this is the... This is a unique one. This is a unicorn, man. This is a unicorn of a wine. It's 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 a leap of faith, I guess, and it works. For those of you who love Petit Syrah, seek this this wine out. This is gravity, and this is very very cool. It's a combination of Petit Syrah, Sinfandel, Sangiovese, believe it or not, Cabernet Sauvignon, and some Grenache, right? Yep, you, you, you nailed it incredible incredible I'm, I'm in love with this wine and then the last one this is you know drinking history this is this is drinking vines that were planted what when fdr was president or eisenhower 40s 50s right no, not that old not not, not, not that old. old not that old 60s 70s the, these were these were in the 80s Oh, hey, so the Zinfandel was in the 30s, 40s, right? The, the Zinfandel was. Oh, my God. The Zinfandel I got it. was, and then there's a little bit of it in the red blend, too. Okay. Okay. The very, very old bond. The so, the, Mark, th I was ahead, just going to say that the, the Cabernet isn't, isn't that old. We do, there is a block called Los Niños um, planted at, on Monterosso that was planted in 1940. However, it doesn't, it, it does not make it into this blend because we couldn't offer it to you at sixty dollars. Yeah, but do you do you make other bottles that are not available here that are only for club members or, or not really? No, this uh, we don't have a, a a DTC. You know, we don't have a um, direct to consumer. Um, you know, you can go to our website and 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 I, I imagine you guys can order them. Um, but there's no. You know, I I I could see uh, making some old vine simeon. Um, yeah. Oh, love, I would love that. So you don't make any whites, or you do, but you don't sell them. You don't make no, any whites. This is this is it. This 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 these three wines. What what I'm really and we wrap up this with with this because I'm you know it's it's late here. At least I have a, a little kid, so you can get 
this three wines, I'm, I was very bad at math, but maybe 150 for all three of them, right? If you put put the prices around, yeah. you know, 60, 75. These are very, very gr- delicious wines, great red wines, the Tisra base blend, the Symphonet and the Cabernet, amazing wines. Mark, thank you for your time. My last question, have, have you ever been to Puerto Rico or not yet? I haven't, I'd love to go. Well, well, we're waiting. We will, we will take you around. Uh, Jorge Wolf knows a place or two. I was with him the other day, and thank you for all that you uh, give to us consumers and the pleasure you provide. I will find. I will. I will find a, a good spot to to drink the rest of these bottles with family and friends, and really, really enjoy the quality of the fruit that I'm drinking. Thank you, my friend. Have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you in Puerto Rico anytime soon, man. Yeah, it was great to uh, be with you today, and I appreciate all your time, too. So thank you. Thank you. I will send you the link once it's in the YouTube channel. Take care, man. Bye-bye. Thank you.